dictator for a day and make a law, uh, a rule to make the world more the way you think it should be, to make society better, what would it be? Think about that for a minute. Um, I've been asking this question uh, as a professor of law in Japan, uh, teaching across cultures for about a decade now. And uh, the answers I get from the students are as interesting as they are varied. Uh, the Western students are pretty, they take to the task, and I remember one uh, student who, she wanted a law that would require everybody to buy her a present every day, which is really, I think, taking the dictator, really taking the dictator thing to heart. Most of the other students come up with something much more public-spirited. Um, the Japanese students take a lot more prodding. I think they spend so much time learning what the the law is that they <clears throat> never really feel empowered to think about what the law should be, but if you push them hard enough, they, uh, they come up with <clears> the <throat> same sorts of things. Uh, you know, I have one student who wanted, he really liked soccer, so he wanted everybody to have mandatory soccer practice. But you know, again, things like uh, more social welfare programs for the, for the handicapped, things like that. Um, and <clears throat> once they give me some examples, it's great, because they've fallen into my trap. Because my next question, why do you hate freedom? And they, well, of course, we don't hate freedom. Hands ah, <laughs> nice and phallic. Um, so, uh, of, course they, of course we don't hate freedom, but for the most part, the laws, the, the rules that they would make uh, would infringe the freedom of other people, would limit the freedom of other people to not play soccer, to, to spend their money as they please, rather than buying presents or paying taxes to pay for social welfare programs for the handicapped. Um, and I go through this exercise because I think it's, on the one hand, it's completely obvious, <laughs> Uh, but we don't really think very much uh, about law as something we do to other people. And then I give them an example. If it was me, I grew up with animals, I love dogs, I, I grew up with cats, dogs, hamsters, uh, so I love animals. Um, and if it was me, I would make a law that really imposed harsh punishments on people who abuse animals. Everybody like that? Yeah. yeah. Um, but I also like beef pie and lamb curry, so I would also be sure to draft the, de the definition of an a animal abuse uh, to, to make sure that it excluded the process by which cute animals went from the barnyard to my dinner table. <laughs> We don't think of law in these terms enough, I think. Uh, we, can, we naturally conceptualize uh, rules as something that other people should obey. Uh, the, the, I, to, to give you a, a sort of a, a cross-cultural example, it's, uh, it's uh, the Confucian scholars of old are said to have hated the law because it was for immoral, uncultured people who didn't know how to act properly. Uh, and I can say that in a room for old Westerners and their uh, ancient oriental wisdom. But I, I think it's really just uh, a, a universal truth that we conceptualize law as some, something that other people should, should obey. Uh, ancient Confucian scholars probably knew how to act properly or thought they did uh, and didn't need law. I, I don't need the law to tell me how to treat animals properly, it's, it's, it's other people, it's you guys. Um, now, you might decide that, well, my eating habits are actually part of the problem of animal abuse. And I, I will be a benevolent di dictator, I will listen to you explain to me why we should all be vegetarians over a nice steak dinner. Um, and I might actually even agree 
to in, make my law <coughs> so that it made everybody have to eat vegetarian, that it banned meat eating by everyone but myself, <laughs> because we dictators need to keep up our strength. Um, I, I might even commit to being a vegetarian most of the time, except when I didn't feel like it. <coughs> um, And I go through this exercise both to make them realize this, but also because we don't think enough about who the law is for. My law was ostensibly for animals, but to them it would seem crazy. You, can, you can't hit us, but you can eat us. Um, but really it's, it's the law for me. So for, first and foremost, it's for me. It's for how I think society should be. Um, and it can actually often be very difficult to identify who the law is for. Because in a society where that is democratic or aspires to be democratic, uh, I think we all sort of just comfortably assume that it's for us. But there's this very subtle dynamic of formulating the law in a way that applies to you but maximizes my own freedom. Why would I ever use my ability to uh, make rules to restrict my own freedom? It's, it's natural to not do that. Um, and I try to get my students to understand this because in, in many complex societies, the law is sort of explained as here, it's for everybody, it's for everybody's good. Um, but there's often a very subtle agenda that's very hard to see, but which can really best be understood through identifying this process. Who is the rule directed at? And who gets to retain some freedom uh, in that rule? I, I think I'm pointing out something that's, that's very, fairly obvious, but it can be very difficult to actually identify sort of who the, who the law is for. Uh, who made it, uh, particularly when you're working across cultures, across languages, across legal systems, because nobody would, uh, very few people would create a law as blatantly self-interested as my uh, <coughs> prohibition of cruelty to animals and, and vegetarianism for everyone but myself rule. <coughs> um, it'd be a much more subtle process than that. Now, if you look at law as sort of one end of the scale, the most coercive side of the scale of telling people what to do, telling other people what to do, uh, then you know, the, the, the less coercive, softer version of that is sort of mandates, expressions of norms, telling people what to do and what not to do. Um, and one of the things that I've been doing for a long time now, mostly in Japan but in other places, is I, 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 I see these signs everywhere saying, do this, do, don't do that. Um, and it's always, some of them are very interesting because you have to sort of figure out who, who's making this and what's it really for, what's, wh why is this norm being expressed? Um, and I, I haven't had the chance to do that in Hong Kong yet, I've already seen some interesting signs, but I thought I'd go, go through and try to illustrate this process with some of the uh, <coughs> things that I have seen. Uh, flashing zero three. <laughs> Oh, here we go. So, uh, my Chinese isn't, isn't that great, but it says, uh, single step forward is a great advance for civilization. So this is fairly easy to understand. Um, this is clearly a rule announced by the people who have to clean this, the, the urinal um, above which it's uh, hanging. Uh, Micronesia Mall, I have the same, same sort of agenda. Uh, the pe I don't know if you've ever seen people chewing betel nut, but it's kind of uh, yucky when they spit it around. So if you're the people who have to clean them all, then uh, <clears throat> don't do that. This one is a little harder. This has started to appear in train stations around Japan. No walking on the escalator. If you've ever been to Japan, it's... <clears throat> Now, uh, what, what are they really going after? Is it, are, they, are they trying to hold back the ocean almost? Um, but, you know, are they, are they just trying to limit their liability by saying, you know, if you walk in the escalator, you might 
What? Uh, lock your bicycle sets. Uh, now, the, the police in Japan want you to know that it's, uh, you shouldn't take pictures uh, up ladies' skirts, of course. Uh, they want you to know that uh, shop theft is a crime and you're being watched. <laughs> they don't want you to watch them, <clears throat> which is a theme we've been seeing a lot. This is outside of a police uh, box in Osaka. You know, no recording or photography in the police box. And we've, that's a theme we've sort of seen a lot of recently, which uh, now that everybody has a camera in their phone. <laughs> uh, you can see who's special. <clears throat> Um, you can sometimes see sort of complex agendas. This is in my local post, post office. It's trying to explain the Byzantine difference between what is a letter is and what is not a letter. So this huge variety of things that are because they've, they've been modifying the postal regulations uh, with, uh, with the liberalization of delivery services. So some things you can send by a private delivery company, some things you can send by, uh, uh, some things you must send by post and you must send letters by post and a letter is, well, um, you can see some of the interesting issues that are going on in society. This is another poster uh, from a few years ago. I was in Japan. You know, organized crime groups. You've probably heard a lot about them. Um, don't fear organized crime groups. Don't <coughs> pay the money. Don't use them. Uh, I mean, like instead of calling the police. <laughs> uh, there, you, you get a view of how the people who make the rules uh, view you. Uh, if you visit the United States, uh, there's this uh, the assumption that everybody's a criminal who reads at the graduate school level. Um, <clears throat> uh, in Japan, there's a sort of assumption that, well, you're not very intelligent. Um, <clears throat> lock all, the, all your doors and windows, try not to get bit, bitten by dogs, how to hide under a table uh, in the event of an earthquake. <laughs> Um, now, here again, you know, do they think people are stupid or are they just sort of justifying uh, some sort of budget uh, by doing something? You, you can sort of get into this whole what's really going on here from the nature of the rules. Now, this is the one I want to talk about. Uh, I found this in a train station in uh, Kyoto and uh, somebody had put some discriminatory graffiti up on the walls. Uh, and it says, discriminatory graffiti infringes the fundamental rights guaranteed by the, 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 the Constitution. <laughs> Um, it's put up by the, whoops, sorry, by the local, by the uh, local uh, legal affairs bureau, which is charged with sort of <clears throat> enforcing human rights. Um, I've read the Japanese constitution a number of times and it doesn't say anything about graffiti. <clears throat> um, but if you actually go to the human rights webpage, and this is Japan, so this is actually the Minister of Justice's cartoon mascot for human rights. Um, <clears throat> They, they have this long list of what they consider to be serious human rights problems in Japan, uh, and it's various forms of discrimination, discrimination against people with HIV, AIDS, uh, age discrimination, and so forth. But if you look at it very closely, it's all discrimination by you against him. Um, and the Ministry of Justice is actually charged with uh, uh, administering the prisons, uh, administering the criminal justice system, uh, carrying out the death sentence, um, uh, a lot of areas that are associated with sort of traditional human rights violations. And I'm not raising this, I'm not mentioning this to sort of identify Japan as having particular human rights issues any more than any other country. Um, but this is just a natural uh, outcome of the dynam dynamic I've been trying to explain, which is you think about the law as a problem caused, you know, that, that solves problems caused by other people. So if you were the government and you were charged with educating about people about the constitution, you're going to, it's natural that it happens this way. Uh, in Japan now, the constitution is explained to people as something that the government uses to protect citizens from other citizens. It's actually very um, creepy, um, but it's also, uh, there is, I don't think, any bad intent. So when we think about law, um, I'd, I'd like to make sort of four closing points. And one is 
Any time we think about what the law should be, whether it's in the context of how to live together in a city, how to <coughs> protect the environment, we really have to think about what is the agenda of the people making that law. And if we allow others, other people to express what the rules should be, express norms, we need to be aware of that, not just in terms of how the rule is formulated, how the norm is formulated, but what's missing. <coughs> Uh, and we should also be careful uh, to ensure that um, our law makes sense to other people, that the rules we express make sense to other people, um, because otherwise uh, we may come across as hypocrites. Uh, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of the day. Mm -hmm.